Well, I wanted to start with, uh, there's a lot of people who have been asking already for information on this, so this is, I'm going to pass this around, and if you want to know more. But also I wanted to extend that, that maybe probably at the end of this we can do a mailing list or some kind of a email thing, so we could all write information about our presentations and share them afterwards as well. So this is for your names and emails. So anyway, um, uh, thank you for coming. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to explain a little bit about Fair Crops. It's got a lot of kind of um, background to it, really, because it's it's kind of built on the, the, the Capital Energy Cooperative and on lots of different anarchist movements and different kind of uh, self-organized um, initiatives that have been started. And we're trying to network between them, so we've, we've got all these different kind of uh, um, points, uh, kind of starting points that people have come from to converge on this, this idea. So there's um, the idea of refunding economics, kind of creating an alternative economic system that comes from this, this kind of hacker point of view. It's also related to Calafo, as, as, uh, as Vida was saying before, that um, a lot of the people who started the Catalan Integro Cooperative were hackers as well. And so they came from a much more kind of theoretical point of view to come together and join these movements that are more about trading food and, and services and things. Um, so we're trying to bring together all these different things, and then there's, there's also the peer-to-peer -peer aspect. So trying to be decentralized and trying not to be just one big thing, which, uh, I mean, I guess if you concentrate on one region or one area, either geographical or, or kind of to do with an area of production or of services, you end up just, just uh, attacking that area and not really working on the rest of the, uh, the things. So we're trying to make small different kind of uh, um, networked ideas and, and projects. So, um, so yeah, it's a really, really big kind of objective, which is to create a new ecosystem kind of globally. And really, the, the, the thing that, that's, um, that we see as most kind of negative from, from what Dida was explaining before is that, that we have a, an economy that's made up of different aspects. So it might have a, um, a free economy, a gift economy, when it's really, really close um, within, a, within a project or within a space. You might have a gift economy happening or a, or a, or a kind of an exchange economy. Then you have social currencies, uh, as, as uh, Lida spoke about as well. But you, once, once you get to the international level, you have to rely on banks at the moment, or you have to rely on fiat currencies and um, the dollar and, and, and large multinationals that, that run all that, all that kind of infrastructure. So we're trying to remove that from the equation and also have a, a global currency that we, can, that we can use for those things. So, um, so yeah, we're, we're uh, trying to be <laughs> these things. We're not actually yet any of these things, but we're, we're trying to be an open global cooperative. I'm going to explain a bit more what that, that means, uh, because we take from the P2P Foundation's um, uh, definition of what an open, open cooperative is. Um, and we try and self-organize by, by the internet and to remain outside nation-state control. Those are kind of intense, really, that's what we, what we want to arrive to, so we're slowly getting, getting to this point. We're not really completely self self organized or it's completely outside nation state control, but that's that's really the objective. Um, and yeah, we're a transition in initiative, so a bit like the Catalan Integral Cooperative, we see ourselves aligned with the transition network, although we're, we add on the anti capitalist aspect as well. Um, um, yeah, basically a lot of a lot of the things we're we're trying to do are, I mean, I guess they're they're very grand ideals. But they start from this this kind of uh, networking of integral cooperatives, and so it's like um, the Catalan integral cooperative, but we thought was something that can work on a global scale. So, oops, this goes beyond the page <laughs> link, but I hope it, it can still be. No, no. Um, yeah. So the people who make up Fair Coop are the the members who join collectives to do different things. So a bit like in the Catalan integral cooperative, someone might join to make milk from nuts or something and so they produce they produce milk every week they take it to a, to a place to where they can share this this produce with other other local producers so this is something that might happen on a very local level but also it could happen uh, by from, from a large cooperative or from a large coll collective that already does something like uh, the, the coffee groups or coffee coffee cooperatives in Central America who already send to a lot of different places around Europe so, so basically, anyone who's who's producing or creating a service uh, within the cooperative economy is uh, can can either be a member, or we already have a lot of members from, from that aspect. And then also the, the kind of activists and, and hackers who come from either uh, um, the crisis, which brought us, us together, or brought together a lot of movements in Southern Europe, 
and so we all kind of know each other from 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 um, the different kind of 15M or, or other movements that have, that have happened around Southern Europe. And so there were a lot of people who were talking about how can we create these kind of things when square occupations happened in Spain, and, and, and I guess since then. And so uh, I guess a lot of the initial people who were members of Fair Crop were from that point of view. There were, there were people who were trying to find a technical solution to this, to the, to, to the crisis of the issues. Um, and so then there's people who want to form another integral crop in other parts of the world. So um, not just for Catalonia, but already there, there are quite a few integral cooperatives around Spain and, and, and starting to arrive in other countries as well. And then other cooperative networks that do similar things as well. And then there's things that can't be, can't be read. <laughs> but, uh, Oh, my refugee projects. So I'm sorry that this is PowerPoints. Kind of PowerPoints. Uh, it's, it's their fault that we missed those last ones. So yeah, one one of the main um, uh, aims of this in the beginning is that the Catalan Integral Cooperative, um, when it was uh, maybe t three years ago, when when Fair Cop was being imagined, the Catalan Integral Cooperative couldn't employ migrants or people who weren't um, didn't have their, their papers. Um, Working so that so if you if you were a paperless migrant, either because you weren't really there long enough, so you couldn't participate in a project that needed you to be in one in one place and um, participating in decisions and, and and in production with people. So a lot of nomadic people or people who work kind of by traveling in different places were kind of automatically excluded from from the capital and the profit. And so it was like, how can we create something that focuses on these people and on the kind of people who are not in one place? But usually connect different different places in, in the work that they do. So, um, so yeah. Um, so these are the three kind of main kind of um, these are these are the, the kind of where where it all comes from. So the hacker ethic, I guess, is is uh, the, there's a, a whole page explaining what it what it is. But basically, it's, it comes from this this initiative of hackers to be kind of anonymous or to be to to, to have kind of encrypted tools and to have our own our own tools that are separate from, from multinationals. So it's really an attempt for autonomy uh, in the virtual space or in the, in the technical space. And then the P2P Foundation was one of the founding members as well. So so they're always con um, kind of concerned with, with how to make um, small things work and how to make small things network between each other. And, uh, and then the integral revolution is like, um, it's kind of begun with the experience of the Catalan Integral Cooperative. So a lot of the fair, fair crop really comes from the limitations of the Catalan Integral, integral Cooperative and how to make that more global and how to, how to change the things that weren't working there and make, the, make them work in a kind of more open and open way. So, so these are the principles of the, of the integral um, revolution, um, which is basically, I guess, I see it as a, as a personal revolution or as a, or as a violence-free revolution or some, something that's more kind of to do with your situation and what you're trying to do, and, and how you can how you can make your local kind of intent be more ethically positive, and how how to make that change. So how to bring yourself autonomy and independence from monetary systems or from systems of oppression, but but kind of centering on your local um, kind of uh, area of action or, or geographical. Area. So um, so basically, a lot of it is kind of cooperative or, or anarchist kind of. Uh, it comes from, from these viewpoints, so, so self-organized assemblies, um, creating commons, and creating for the, for the common good, um, working for human rights, all of these things are kind of quite standard things that, that appear in cooperatives in, in anarchist groups. Um, but basically it comes from a criticism of uh, cryptocurrencies and a crit criticism of banks. So, I'm um, sorry, criticism of, of cooperatives. So. Um, Cooperative, well, there's lots more things that, that generally make up what a cooperative is. For a lot of people, it's a legal name. So it's like something that you, you come up with and then you register it legally and then you're a cooperative because you have that legal structure. But we, we kind of see it as, um, both within the Catalan Integral Cooperative and in Fair Crop, we see, we see it as, as just cooperating. So when you cooperate, then you're a cooperative. Not because you have a legal, a legal form or because you register legally within a state but because you're cooperating. So these are kind of the basic kind of original ideas, or what we see as the original ideas of, of cooperatives, which is, um, I guess, working for, um, for mutual aid, mutual support amongst the people who are taking part, 
and doing what you couldn't do on your own, but bringing together different different kinds of uh, skills and resources so that you can do more work together, and and to work kind of in a democratic horizontal way. But the, li the limits of this and what's happening, uh, also what happened with 40 years of Francoist rule in Spain was that the, the cooperative legal form was really attacked and turned into something that was much more kind of focused on, on efficiency from a, from a monetary perspective of making more money and, and also trying to make them more like small businesses. So, so trying to make it easier to set up cooperatives but also to make, it, um, make a cooperative much more like a standard business and less, less of a... Of a horizontal organization. So within Spain, really, there's, there's a, a, the group of big cooperatives and the group of small cooperatives. And the smaller cooperatives are really kind of up, up, uphold these older values. And they don't really want to be um, financially efficient. They just want to be cooperatively efficient, I guess. They want to they be good at sharing and they want to be, be positive places to work and things like that. But uh, the larger cooperatives are trying to be more um, efficient and they're trying to be more um, competitive in the kind of with other businesses and with other, with, with other kind of um, uh, institutions and things. So, um, so really the, the whole cooperative uh, form in Spain is, is under a lot of debate because there are lots of different viewpoints for it. So, um, so yeah, these are, these are some of the criticisms that usually come up, which is the identifying with the legal status that you have. So the, because you have a cooperative, once that cooperative becomes unviable, then you close the cooperative and go and do something else. Whereas in the capital intensive cooperative and in, in, in fair co-op, we create um, lots of little cooperatives as a kind of, we're, we're kind of a, an umbrella group that doesn't have a legal structure of its own. So fair co-op doesn't exist legally, and neither does the, the capital and intensive cooperative. It, they, they're just groups of people who cooperate, and who cooperate, and they register different legal forms as they see fit. So if we want to produce items to trade, um, to, to sell as food, then we, register, we do all the registration so that all our members can do those things. And if we want to run a service, then we do all those things as well. So the, the problem is, usually those, those legal um, rules are regional. So in Catalonia, there's a set of laws that change when you go to another region of Spain, for example. And across Europe, of course, there's loads of different, different uh, regulations. So depending on where you're active, you have to be restricted to that area. And this is what happens with, with a lot of cooperatives, that you, you're just stuck to that one geographic area or to those 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 laws and legal terms. So um, we were trying to see how can we escape from it. Um, and then yeah a lot of a lot of uh, co-ops work with closed license co property software and, and they, they kind of create only for themselves really so, so only, only for the internal members. So this this basically where um, the P2P Foundation kind of came in a few years ago and, and and they, they gave a lot of input to, to our projects to, when we were just coming up with Fair Co-op, they, they kind of really um, gave us a lot of, uh, a lot of help because they were doing this Flock Society project which was trying to look at uh, how, how a state could be a partner with, it, with cooperatives and with socially positive things. And so they've been to, um, I think it was Ecuador, and they were trying to work with the state to, to try and see if they were going to do um, P2P stuff or distributed um, sharing and sharing initiatives and things like that, but they weren't. They they, they were kind of quite. A, um, they weren't very successful with this project, and they found that the, that the state just wanted to look like it was doing a lot of positive stuff, and then it wasn't. They weren't really focusing on these things. So then they came to work with us, and when they came to work with us, we really kind of gave a lot of input towards towards fair um, co. So um, they saw that, that the Catalan Integral Cooperative was pretty much an open cooperative because we worked with a common good, but we were limited to a geographical area and we had close membership, so we, we had to become a member of it to, to, to do things. And, and a lot of people were had this us and them mentality, so you had to be a member because we all knew each other so well and we were such a tight knit community within Catalonia that, that it's, I mean, it was possible to see someone as an outsider or as an insider and treat them differently. So that was starting to happen. So, um, so an open cooperative has a global character and works for the common good, and this is what we're trying to do with the So um, here's a bit more, but, but this is uh, what um, he like I said already before in his presentation. But, um, but yeah, we, we have our, our kind of our, um, assemblies that are, um, that you have to be in person, you have to be there in person to, to participate in usually. We do run Moodle and uh, Mumble and different, di sorry, Mumble and, um, and sometimes other, other kinds of uh, video conferencing things, but mostly it's just uh, in person. 
and and taken notes by hand. So so they take a long time these these uh, assemblies, and they're quite kind of um, time consuming and, and a lot of effort, a lot of the time you go from one assembly to another. And and this is a problem also with with fair cost. But what we like to do is to work on the ways in which we, we collaborate with each other and how we participate to make this less time consuming and more and more kind of so that you can participate in the, in, in the areas of interest to you, but also in things that are far away from you. So this is really hard, but we're trying to we're trying to do this with the with fair cost. So um, so yeah then um, yeah I don't think we need to talk about the the catalog of the corporate system. Um, yeah, just to say that the cap, the CIC is, is currently decentralizing, so they they now have uh, the idea of splitting um, into bioregions. So each bioregion is a kind of um, ecologically sufficient space where things can be produced pretty much uh, autonomously within that within that area. So um, so we're, we're kind of splitting across these lines rather than political lines or or, or kind of um, uh, institutional boundaries. We're trying to just be. Um, split according to where the members are and what those members want to do. So we split the, the Catalan cooperative into three parts now. It's, it's actually splitting into four soon. And we want to, to keep decentralized.